Hi and welcome to another tutorial on 2D game design in Unity. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to control your player animation with code. So in the previous couple of tutorials we've been setting up these uh, player animations. So we um, added um, some animations here. We've got player idle, player jump and player walk. So when the game loads um, we have a player idle animation as the characters are standing still and then as the player walks we have a walk animation and when they jump we have a jump animation. So we created those actual animations and then in the last tutorial we set up the uh, animator um, or animation controller so we can specify um, when uh, we can transition from one animation to another and how that transition should look and also what the default animation will be when the game loads. Um, but now what we're going to do is write the actual code in our player controller script to specify um, that the jump animation occurs when we press space to jump and that the walk animation occurs when we uh, move left or right and start moving. Um, so we're actually going to write the code for those animations now. So what I'll do is uh, Go to the script and we'll open up the player controller script in Mono Develop. And what I'll do is just go back to Unity and keep this animator window open so we can see how this actually works. So let's go to the code, and this is a code we've been working on before to um, set up the player movement and jumping and all of that. So, what we need now um, in order to control the animations, we need to access the uh, animator component from the game. So we'll create a new variable here inside the class. It'll be a private one. We'll say private animator. And we'll just give it a name. We might call it player uh, animation. Okay. So give it a name. And then inside the um, start method, we need to actually um, get that component. So we'll use this player animation variable and we'll get that uh, animator component from the scene. So we'll say, well, from uh, from the uh, actual asset that um, the animator component is attached to. So we'll say player animation equals get component, and then these sharp brackets here. We'll say animator, close that sharp bracket, and then an open and closed normal bracket, and we'll end that statement with a semicolon. So just like before, when we had to get the rigid body component um, from this player um, asset to work with movement and velocity. Now we're getting the animator component from the player asset um, so we can work with the animations. Okay, and so now we need to go to the update method and basically what we're going to do, we can just go down here after these uh, if statements here and what we're going to do is we're going to send information back to um, Unity. So we're going to send um, what the speed is and whether the character is grounded or not and so that will determine which animations are being played like we set up in the um, we set up the conditions in the previous tutorial here so first thing that we'll do is um, we'll get um, we'll say down here we'll work with speed so we'll say player animation dot set float Okay, and we'll open up these brackets here. And we've got uh, two, two um, bits of information here that we need to put inside the brackets, a name and a value. So we need to refer, firstly, we're going to send the speed back to um, Unity. So we need to refer to it by its exact name, which is speed, and it starts with an uppercase S. So make sure, we'll put this in quotes, it's a string, say so speed, Make sure it's exactly the same. If I did this with a lowercase s, then I'd be talking about something completely different. So um, make sure it's exactly the same. So speed. And then what we're going to do is we'll say, and I'm going to set this up the wrong way first, just to show you um, what will happen if you do it this way and then how to fix it. So I'll say rigid body. So we'll get the velocity, rigid body dot and if it auto corrects just make sure that to fix it up so it should be rigid body dot velocity dot x so we're moving left and right we're going to get the velocity 
um, of our left and right movement and send it back to Unity. Um, and then so we can close that bracket and end that line with the semicolon. And then the next thing we're going to do is send back to Unity whether the character, whether the player is on the ground or not. So we can say player animation.set and it was a bool that we used, so set bool. And going back to Unity, it's called on ground, capital O and capital G. So on ground inside quotes because it's a st string, comma. And then the value, is, um, we're going to, we're not actually going to change anything, we're not changing the value of anything, we're just going to get the value from here, which is, is touching ground. So we'll just refer to that variable we made um, earlier on. So, oops, is touching ground. There we go. So that variable we made in one of the previous tutorials. Close the bracket and end that line with a semicolon. Now, we'll save that code, go back to Unity, just let that compile, and we'll play this game and we'll keep the animator down here at the same time so we can see what's going on. Now, I can move right and there we go. So we've got our walk animation occurring and I can jump and we've got the jump animation occurring. And you can see what's going on down here. We can see this little um, bar down here is moving when the player is idle and then it moves when the player walks over here. So we've got the player walk animation going and then when I jump, the bars move down here and the player jump as well. So we can see exactly what animation is occurring at any particular time. And if you have a look at the values over here, when I move right, speed increases. For speed over here, it increases when I move right. And when I jump um, and I'm in the air, that box is unchecked. So when I'm not on the ground, it unchecks. When I hit the ground, it's checked again. Okay, so there we go. That's, um, it appears that everything is working okay. But what happens if I move left? We don't get the walk animation. So I move right, we get the walking or running animation. When I move left, we're just back to the idle animation. And so if you have a look over here on speed, we get positive numbers for velocity when we're moving right, and we get negative numbers when we're moving left. So we actually set up um, on the, um, where are we, on the walk animation, uh, here we set up different conditions. So um, we have tra a transition from player idle animation to player walk animation when the speed is greater than 0 0.1. So that works. When we move um, right, um, our velocity increases. Um, so speed becomes greater than 0 0.1. But, because uh, that's been passed back, back into here. So, um, but the problem is when we move left, it's condition we've got is speed is less than 0 0.1 and speed becomes uh, a negative value here. Okay, so um, we've got a bit of a problem there. And so what we want to do is actually go back to the script and we can use a math function here. So we have rigid body dot uh, velocity dot x. Okay, so what we'll do is we're going to turn the negative value into a positive number um, by using a math function absolute. So what we'll do is we'll type math f dot abs, which means absolute, and then we'll put rigid body dot velocity dot x inside brackets. There, so we've got a bracket here, speed, comma, math f dot abs, bracket, rigid body dot velocity dot x, and then we're closing the two brackets that we opened before. Okay, so um, the math function abs or absolute will turn any negative number into a positive number. And why? Well, because when we move right, the velocity is positive, but when we turn left, the velocity is negative. And the walk, the walk animation won't play when the speed is less than 0 0.1. So it means when the speed becomes negative when we're moving left, it transitions back to the idle animation and the walk animation stops playing because it won't play when speed is less than 0 0.1. So now that we're using the mathf.abs function, what that's going to do is it's going to turn 
uh, any negative value for velocity back into a positive value before it passes that back to here and checks um, and the animated controller checks what the value is. So now if we play it, we move right, we see next to speed here, we see positive values. And when we move left, we also see positive values and the walk animation plays now when we move left as well. So that's fixed. All right, so that's cool. So we've got uh, a walking or running animation when we move, we've got an idle animation when we stop, and we've got a jump animation when we jump. Really cool. Okay, so um, one little problem though now that we've spotted it is that when we move right, everything looks great. When we move left, the player is still looking over in this direction to the right, even when he's running left. So what we need to do is we need to flip this sprite over when we move left. And that's what we'll look at in the next tutorial. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.